been a while since we've done a top five decks of the format post Phantom Nightmare, ladies and gentlemen. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen, it's your host with the most, AvriLR32 here, and destroy the ever living boo-boo stain off that like and subscribe button, as I am already at my doctor appointment for my cancer treatment down at Moffitt Cancer Center, so I'm I'm not home right now, so I'm doing all this pre-recording, so we're just going to dive right into it here, because i got to record a bunch of stuff and schedule all this stuff for throughout the week, so... Let's just go ahead and jump right on into it. It's not going to be any sort of fancy animation. So if you're watching this while taking a dump or playing Call of Duty, you feel free, Sugar Boo Bear. Maybe you'd like to look at my sexy mug. <laughs> at, uh, also no particular order. At number five, I've got Runic Variants. Now, yes, Fountain is still at two. Uh, there are many different Runic Variants that you can play. Um, we have the Sprite now with three starter. Most builds are only playing like one or two anyway, depending on your build. But we've got Sprite for higher electric boogaloo whatever build um you've got the by steel horus uh master boo boo stain joshua schmidt special which i think is kind of bad now because we've got all the fire decks running around <laughs> um yeah you've got so many different variations you even just got the regular stun variation that can still cheese you wins like i saw a build i, I think it was from like a a locals or something but regardless the concept is there right and i think it main deck like three fenrir with three d fisher then just a bunch of runic spells and it's side deck like the amato awados and stuff stuff like that can get you free wins if you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars possibly a thousand even with populous and promethean princess being an ultra in phantom nightmare you know if you don't want to spend all the money on fire kings and rescue ace and whatever you can just play something like runic which is fairly cheap and flunder by extension, and still get some free wins. Anything that doesn't care about the graveyard is going to have a really good time. So, Runic is, is pretty self-explanatory in that regard. At number four, I have Flunder, the deck that loses to itself, even with all of its consistency. Now, there was a new, I think it's called Swallow Crow spell card that was revealed in Phantom Nightmare. It's a TCG exclusive or import, whichever one it is. But it lets you banish a Wing Beast from your hand or field, to add one with the same level. So that's going to be interesting for implications in Flunder. I may have just butchered the entire effect. I don't have it up in front of me. Um, but regardless, it's Wingby support. So therefore, it's Flunder support. So it's going to be interesting to see if Flunder gets any better with that card, um, if at all, or if it's just still going to kind of be a almost rogue, but still kind of better than rogue type of deck. Um, it's, it's going to be very interesting in that regard. Um, although with Flunder, I do have to give a honorable mention to Centurion because yes, you can make the argument that Flunder is more rogue than Centurion, but the problem, like I said in my tier list video, the problem with Centurion is that if everybody in the room knows what the deck does and knows what to expect, then they know like, okay, if they don't have any Horus cards up like a photon, or like that they can go into a photon Lord with, then you just negate the Primera and like the Centurion player is crapping on the floor. So, like, there's really not much you can do about that because of the fact they just lose to one hand trap. So, whereas if people in the room don't know what the deck does, then you can take advantage of that and do really well. And it looks like a tier one deck, right? So, take that for what you will. I, I wanted to tie in Centurion and Flunder into that. Um, and then we move on into the big bad boys in the room. At number three, I have Rescue Ace. I had to look back at my list. <laughs> so... Rescue Ace, it just gets better with the Snake Eyes stuff. Any deck, even if it's not named Rescue Ace, Fire King, whatever, anything that can play the Snake Eyes stuff is just going to strictly be better because the Snake Eye cards are just that good. Like, if you look at builds in the OCG right now, a lot of people have been saying things like it's mostly just a Snake Eye deck with, like, other meta sub-engines. Like, pretty much everything is just a Snake Eye deck with maybe some Rescue Ace cards, or maybe some Fire King cards, or maybe some, I don't know, Cash Tier cards, Adventure cards, whatever the case may be. You know, uh, Flamberge is just such an insane card, right? Like, being able to send off your Ash and Populous to get out Flamberge from the hand or deck, send it off to get back your two level ones. And the thing is, is that Flamberge says when it's sent from the hand or field to the grave, it gets you two level ones. So, like, even if you open with it, you can just pitch it for a Black Witch. As long as you've got the Ash and Populous or Hell, any two level one fires in your grave, 
then it's live. And it's it's just unbelievable. So keep in mind, too, we're also getting Snake Eye uh, Dramatic Chase, which basically acts like a little bit of an extender. I've been messing around with it. I'm not sure how big of a fan I am of Dramatic Chase, but it's seen some success in the OCG. And, of course, Rescue Ace just being a fantastic back row deck, not really caring about things like Droll, depending on, you know, how they open, whether or not, you know, not being able to search hurts them. The hit to Airlifter really doesn't do a whole lot. Um yeah like it's it's just kind of whatever and that's what's just really funny about rescue is it just kind of plays ignorantly to a lot of things which again makes it very very good i've even seen some rescue Ace builds playing some fire king cards along with the snake eye card so it'll be interesting to see if we see like a 60 card good pile come out of like all this good stuff coming out where you're just playing a 60 card rescue Ace deck with a bunch of good cards you know we saw that um was it TCG player? Yeah, it was TCG player, but I don't know if it was like a regional or whatever. But it was a 60-card Zodiac Adventure like combo deck with like Small World and Horus cards. Like, it was wild. Like It was actually really impressive. Let's see. Uh, at number two, I have, of course, Labyrinth. Uh, Labyrinth with a transaction roll back that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> card's insane. It's so good. Uh, transaction rollback in any trap deck is really good. Um, I've even been trying to mess around with it in Eldritch because, you know, you can copy your uh, your trap monsters. Uh, but I don't know. I think it's just better in lab and, like, it's okay in Eldritch, I guess. But, yeah, Eldritch is more floodgate than anything else. So, um, but it's definitely seemed like it's just been better in lab. And also keep in mind that I believe in Phantom Nightmare, if not Legacy of Destruction, we get the Truffle Waffle card or whatever the hell it's called, where you can activate it, call the monster name. Your opponent can't summon that monster to the end of the turn. And then you can banish it from your grave, call a monster card name. They can't activate any of that monster's effects. So you can copy that with Transaction Rollback and call two monsters and say you call like Fenrir Unicorn or like... Robina and Eaglin, and then they just can't summon those monsters till the end of the turn, which is insane, unless they rule it differently. But from what I understand, you can do that. Labyrinth is, of course, just a very consistent trap deck. You know, having access to Triple Chaos Angel makes the deck really damn good. Uh, and then, of course, at number one, was there any fucking surprise? It's Fire King. We're in Year of the Fire. Fire King will be coming on in here and tapping some ass and calling you a bad baby. Uh, it's it's going to be insane. If you're not preparing for Fire King, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, you've got to be playing Drolls. You've got to be playing Imperms. You've got to be playing Ashes. I think that those are going to be some of the best hand traps in the meta. Debatably, Nibiru, because, like, if people in the room are expecting Nib, then they're going to... Oop. If people in the room are expecting Nib, then they're going to play around Nib. They're going to do different combo lines to where even if they get Nib, then they can still play. If they're being ignorant to Nib, then if you Nib them when they have the Masquerade up along with a couple other monsters, then they're going to be crapping all over the venue floor. And so it just, again, it just depends on how they open because the hands are so malleable with Fire King that even though it's very much a combo deck, it also depends on how you open. Similar to tier, but nowhere near as luck based. So, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Uh, I really just wanted to, you know, give my thoughts on what I think the best meta decks are going to be. And I think that going forward, these are going to be the things to beat. I think Ashen will maybe be a good sub engine, but that's really hard to tell at this point because of the fact that it's a TCG exclusive. So maybe it'll be the next Burning Abyss or maybe it'll be the next Dual Avatar. Or who knows? You know, um, we just have to kind of wait and see. So guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. I got to get to recording all the other stuff.